Hi everybody, so I thought it was time that I created a dedicated series about modding Daisy PC community servers. You've probably seen lots of my videos where they really concentrate on uh, console ones. Now, lots of this stuff is very, very similar, but if you play da uh, Daisy PC and you think, actually, I really fancy one of these community servers for myself, this is going to be a series of videos just for you. A real beginner's guide updated for 2024, when I'm going to try and bring lots of the core ideas and concepts and tools together to start you on your server modding journey. Okay, so <laughs> in this introductory video, what I'm going to be going through is a bit of a background and kind of how this series of videos will work and how you can access them. Um, and we're going to be looking at some of the things that you can do as well. You know, why should you buy and rent a Daisy PC community server? You know, what's in it for you? Because, well, one of the main things is quite a lot of work. <laughs> but don't worry, it's all fairly simple concepts and things like that. Now, in the description below this video, you'll find you'll find a few links to get you started as well. You'll find a link to the next video. I'm going to try and record these videos in some some sort of logical order so you can work through them. And then in the next videos, there'll be a previous one, obviously being the first one, this one. There's no previous one to this one. Also, you'll find a link to the playlist of all of these videos so that if you're already familiar with some of the concepts you can go in there and you can kind of choose what you want to watch also <laughs> i'll put a link to my playlist about console community server modding now console community server modding and pc community server modding are very very similar um, basically you can do anything on a pc community server that you can do on a console one but you can do more on pc steam workshop mod specifically is something that we can do um, more on pc however one of the advantages that console have is the way that nitrado do some of their um, dashboard control about your server uh, it isn't available on pc in the same way that it's available on on console so when you're going through the piece the uh, console um, tutorials when you come across something that talks about the console uh, dashboard that you access either from like the Xbox app or from the Nitrado website that looks different on when we do on PC so I will be going through all this and I'm going to be basically repeating a lot of these videos but sometimes when I make a video tutorial about a specific subject it, <laughs> it can be good to look at another video I've done about the same subject which puts a slightly different spin on it just in case maybe you don't understand or I haven't explained it very well also we're going to be concentrating on PC community servers that are hosted on Nitrado because this is where I have my PC servers. Now, there's lots of other server providers out there and they will do things slightly differently, but the core idea is, is Nitrado. And the good thing about starting off with the Nitrado server is that it's a shared server, so you can get something like a, a fairly cheap light one for, with only four slots on for £4.51 a month. So you can check it out see how you get on you can shape the server into the experience that you want it to be before you either go on to you know more slots because you're building a community or go on to say something like a dedicated server which is much much more expensive where you have your own little computer somewhere in the in the uh, in the data center um, that hosts your version of daisy that will have higher performance but they're they're expensive so nitrado is a really good way to start and it's really good to keep way to keep going forward in terms of cheapness um because they're also easy to manage manage you know it holds your hand as well so if you're thinking about it, thinking oh yeah I'm, I'm quite interested in this i fancy a daisy pc console community server what can you do so let's talk about some of the things to whet your appetites to uh, get you motivated to work your way through these videos well one of the most important things i think is is access you can control access to your own server which means that you can have a console uh, a pc community server in the cloud that only you can you and your mates can get onto so you can secure it with a whitelist and you can secure it with a um, uh, password if you like and you can make sure that you know, you're the only the people that you want to play on it can play on it, which is really cool. Now, you may well have heard about local servers, and local servers are ones that you run on your own PC. They're really good if you want to play single player Daisy by yourself, um, and uh, I'll cover that in in a later video. But if you want to play with your friends, really, you've got to get a server in the cloud. Otherwise, you've got it's a lot of complicated stuff to do with with um, 
with uh, with router uh, access and things like that. So you know, it's access is a really big one. Next thing probably that people think about is being able to customize the loot. So how would you really like a daisy where it's easier to survive? You know, there's there's more food around, there's more drinks around. Um, things spawn in pristine and um, guns spawn in with magazines and suppressors and scopes on them, that sort of thing. Or you could do it the other way, you could actually make it harder so there was less food around, all that sort of stuff. So we can kind of do that. You can change the starting loadout of your characters as well. So you could create like a, a team deathmatch or a free for all server where people spawn in like this chap here, you know, with, with a full kit of gear ready to fight. You could customize the spawn location. So instead of spawning on the coast on Churras, all your survivors spawned around, say, the northwest airfield. And you could charge in and be fighting each other, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can add custom buildings and locations, such as this castle up at Sinistock, so which is pretty amazing, isn't it? So you can you can um, customize your Daisy server to have say bases in different places. Also on PC, we can take things away <laughs> um, using an using the Daisy editor mod. Well, we add stuff using the Daisy editor mod as well. And as far as this stuff goes, you know. The only limit is your imagination and the time you're willing to put in. But also, there's plenty of people who have uploaded files to the web so you could, where they share their, their structures and uh, things that you can add, which is very, very cool indeed. We can change the length of the day and night. This was a really big one for me. When we first got community servers for console, back in, I don't know, 2019, wherever it was, this was probably the most important one because it was... You know, you would play on a um, on a public server, and you'd log in, and it would be night time. And maybe you know, you've been at work all day. You only had an hour to play Daisy, or even less. And it was night time. You're like, look, I enjoy playing Daisy at night, but I've got stuff I need to do, you know, <laughs> in, in the game, and I can't do that at night. So you can have really short nights and really long days, or the other way around, should you wish. Complete vehicles spawning in. How cool is this? So when you find a vehicle, it's not actually in bits. It's got all the got all the bits already on it. So all you need to do is add water to the uh, radiator and fuel to the fuel tank, jump in, drive off, and th then you're good to go. How, how, how cool is it to be able to have that? And then with PC, we have the Steam Workshop. So you'll already have access to Steam um, because you've got Daisy on PC. And then you can go to Community and you can go to the Workshop and um yeah i would say go over i'll put links to uh, this in the description of this video so you can have a look you can access it through the steam client or you can actually access, access it through the website and this is where we subscribe to things and the steam workshop for daisy is how daisy handles um lots of mods i'm going to say lots of mods because all the mods we've talked about so far so complete vehicles day night changing uh, custom um structures changing the, the loot changing what you start off with they are xml and json mods that we can do on console as well we don't have access to the steam workshop on on console but the way that daisy manages the these pc type mods is via steam and so what happens is you subscribe to them and uh, let's go to so i don't know this one i don't know what it is craft preview pro you go to this one and you subscribe to that and then it would download that uh, the next time you fired up DayZ, and that would then be available if you were to play on a server that had that mod. Often, uh, mods will have dependencies as well that you'll have to subscribe to, which will be down here. Um, we don't normally think about it that much, but you know, like in here, if you were to join, if you look at these servers, so here we go, so we can see what's, what mods is running on this server, so it needs all of those mods running that way. Um, and you know, have a look through, it's very easy to get carried away. And one of the big mistakes I think lots of community server owners make is that they have way too many mods on their server. So bear that in mind, with DayZ, less is more, and often there's probably a handful of mods that will make a big difference to the way that your server feels and plays, and to the fun people have, or the challenge people have on it. Um, and you don't have to install everything, uh, honestly, because one of the problems that we have as a... Um, PC uh, community server owner are updates and as you well know every month or so or every couple of months Daisy gets a big update and often these Daisy updates where they change the core game they break mods so mods will stop working so the more mods you have on your server that update process becomes more difficult because obviously all these individual mods have got un individual people working on them it's not the Daisy devs who make these mods 
um, and they make it might take time for them to update it and it might not be obvious straight away which mod is the one that's breaking your server and making it work so the less you can have the best then also a little tip as well I would always say is as you're going forward when you get your server set up if you run into a situation where something stops working just go back to vanilla you know just run with no mods for a while and then you know things things will work out but the, the daisy workshop is is absolutely amazing the um the amount of work and effort that people have put in over the last 10 years is is absolutely stunning um and the sort of mods we're going to be going to be concentrating on we're going to be putting an admin tools mod on on now this is really important it means that as you go into your server um, with your steam id what you'll be able to do and as the admin of the server you'll be able to teleport yourself around you'll be able to um you'll be able to um, spawn things in you'll be able to um check how things are working on the server all, all these really really cool admin stuff that once you know about it you'll take advantage of and you can you can run around and do things not to be used for cheating <laughs> <laughs> or grieving other players um, but it's for admin stuff which is very very cool makes a massive difference it makes fault finding much much easier than it is on console because with pc if we've say uh done a done a xml mod or a json mod where we now have vehicles spawning in complete or say guns that spawn in with magazines and and suppressors already on them on pc we can go in we can use admin um, zombie admin tools to go to somewhere where these things spawn and we can see if they are spawning correctly and we're on, on console we've got to physically go into the server as a player and run around or find a vehicle um, and and go to that place so admin tools on pc very very powerful the trader you know this is something that everybody really likes somewhere that you can go and you can talk to some NPCs and you can buy and sell stuff. So this gives you a whole money, monetary system, which really changes the gameplay loop on DayZ um, in a fun way, I think, as well. It means that you could have like PvP servers, you know, where people maybe are given money to start off with and they got to get to the trader to buy a different loadout. Um, or you can have a PvE server where you restrict what loot spawns in the world so you could ha actually have it for example where none of the high-end weapons spawn in the world um, and it's up to players to scavenge Chernerus or Livonia and then bring things to the trader to sell to then get the money to buy the guns that they need or the things they need to survive say building equipment off the trader and just change that gameplay loop you know you know how people play so we can look at Dr. Jones Trader helicopters I mean rfs helis we're probably going to install um uh, daisy dog one of my favorite mods i mean who wouldn't want to be in the apocalypse without man's best friend absolutely fantastic um we're probably going to look at dump Ra's building fortifications mod as well i like this one because it enables you to um secure vanilla buildings which i think is probably how you would do it in the apocalypse wouldn't you you know you wouldn't decide to build a fort in the middle of a clearing you would go wait a minute there's a village down the road there i can just secure one of those buildings so we'll probably have a look at that one um and also of course new maps so the map we're probably going to be looking at in this series of videos is going to be Nmalsk because it's nice and small it looks absolutely fantastic it has some different mechanics and we're gonna to have to play with some files that are, that are a bit different to what we would normally play with on on console as well in terms of uh, the init.c file and stuff like that um and there may be will be lots of other mods that you're thinking well, wait a minute I, you know i want to learn how to install expansion and things like this the idea of this series of videos is it's a beginner's guide so by the end of it when you get to the end you'll have you'll have a really good idea about the core concepts of how pc community server modding works so that when you come to work on the more complicated mods and trust me they can get pretty complicated things like the expansion mod um, you'll have a better background and you'll have a better understanding of how the jigsaw pieces come together and importantly then when it doesn't work you'll understand where to start looking to, to kind of fix it but you'll be able to install lots of good stuff so there we go welcome along for the ride remember in the description below this video you'll find a link to the next video and you'll find a link to the um the playlist with all of the videos in and uh, you'll also find a link to the playlist with the console ones in because most of it is very very similar indeed so there we go let's get started if you enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course i will see you again soon